Hi, welcome back to Family Art Project's Depth and Distance series. Today we are creating imaginary species from fantastical environments. So using our special mindful eyes, we're going to see things uh, a little differently. All the things we engage with um, in our day-to-day -day lives, we're going to imagine parts of our homes as fantastical ecosystems and the objects that we use daily as the things that build our species. So we'll imagine a species, which is a whole kind of group or animals or plants or other organism uh, it, that makes up a, a population and we'll imagine their adaptations or the special skills or traits that they have to survive this fantastical ecosystem that they're surrounded in. Uh, from there, we'll have a fun worksheet kind of linked below where you can tell the story of your imaginary species. But for now, I'm going to leave it to Ryan to take us away into a fantastical environment. Where? Where am I? How did I end up here? Well, wherever I am, I'm definitely far from home. Maybe if I identify the things around me, it'll help me get my bearings. Like this here. This looks like a spider. Wow, it's so beautiful. Maybe I should call it a spider plant. And, and what's this here? This is a beautiful creature. It looks so unique. Maybe if I observe it a bit closer, I can see where it came from and imagine how this creature came to be. Found Object Art is all about looking at materials in new ways. To begin this project, you simply need to pay attention to your surroundings. Since I imagine this room with all these magical plants as a new habitat, I'm beginning to see things differently. It is through this way of looking that I've selected my materials here to create my imaginary species. These materials include colorful paper that I have, an ice cream jar since I love my ice cream, tin foil from my kitchen since I love baking, and of course from my new habitat come my fig leaves that have dried up. So let's begin. First, I want to create the body of my creature, so to do so, I'm going to wrap my ice cream jar in aluminum foil to create a really shiny look. And I'll use some tape here to hold it down and make sure the aluminum is secure. I have a lot of aluminum here, so I'm going to press it down to make sure I don't waste the material and cover everything. Now, I will grab my favorite color paper, red, and cut some stripes. I'm a big baseball fan, and my favorite baseball team is the Cincinnati Reds, and stripes are very common in baseball. So, I'll bring my love of baseball and animals together in this step. These stripes, I'll place them around the body for decoration. Using tape, I'll roll them around carefully to make sure they create a nice pattern on the outside of the body. The colors here look very nice together. The silver and the red, even the yellow tape matches really well. Look how beautiful that red stands out on this shiny aluminum. Then one of my favorite materials are my fig leaves. Unfortunately, they couldn't survive, so I need to use them as art materials. I'm going to attach them to the body as wings. Now, I want to create a face. I have an old key that I no longer use. So, I'll use tape to not only hold the key in place, but to create what looks like a beak. Kinda looks like a bird. So far, it's coming together really nicely. Last, I have to create a bottom part for my species. I found these cool buttons and I like the look of them and they fit perfectly in this tiny cup. So I'm going to place them inside the cup here and tape the cup down to the bottom of my species. 
since the shape of this part is round, I have to adjust the tape a little so that it fits flat onto the surface. After ripping the edges down and placing it on, here it is. My species is finished. And I will name it Fidgetive the Red Stripe. Ryan showed us a species he imagined into being by finding materials that gave his creation a special meaning. Ryan created his species based on the environment his species was found in, so his species needed wings to visit each of those amazing plants. To get started on imagining your own species, start thinking about where your species will live. And to where the species live, what does your species need to survive in this habitat? So find a small corner of your home that you can look at with new eyes. This is my dried out terrarium where I keep all the uh, natural materials I find. I throw them in here. I wonder what my species would need if it lived in something like this. Maybe your species lives inside a keyboard. Maybe your species can endure the heat of a stove and whisks away time in this kitchen ecosystem. Maybe your species finds solace in the recesses of a junk drawer. Maybe your species finds wisdom in a bookcase. Now that you've named a habitat for your species, it's time to find materials. Remember that found objects can give your creation a special meaning. So think about what purpose each object serves and what this will mean if it is part of your species. Today you can pay attention to maybe what you're throwing away and then maybe that can be part of your creature. Really study each object you hold in your hand today. To imagine this species, I gathered a few materials based on their characteristics or what they do. So I picked a sponge because I like that sponges can absorb things and I'm thinking about how that might look in my species that I create. I have this teasel here that I've collected from the day from days ago and I love teasel because it is used in the textile industry um, with fabrics to to tease out wool to untangle. So I like the idea of that. I have a candle here that a friend made, and I like the idea that a candle sparks fire, so I'm thinking of sparking ideas. I have these little um, buds from a tulip tree, not to be confused with a tulip. These, this tree resembles, um, the flowers that this tree produces resembles tulips, kind of. And I like the idea of a flowering tree, something that unfurls and unfurls so that it can pollinate, um, be pollinated by um, some insects. I have these damaged leaves here. These leaves are um, have little holes in them because some insect uh, ate these pieces. And I really love the idea that this leaf is, the veins are still intact despite the damage that was done to it. So I wanna play with that idea a little bit. I have this beautiful cattail, which might be my favorite because it is so soft. And cattail is an amazing, amazing plant because the seed, which is here, is uh, actually, it gets, dispersed, it gets dispersed by the wind. So as the cattail flows in the wind, all the seeds are getting dispersed and cattails are nice and soft and I love that softness just goes everywhere. And I have this tape measure because I like the idea that things can be measured and calculated and intentional. So I'm gonna play with these objects and think about how they make a species and how each, each characteristic of each object means something to the species. Meet Absorbo Softy. Absorbo Softy is a species that kind of resembles a crab and kind of resembles a scorpion, and kind of resembles a butterfly, but Absorbo Softy is none of those things. And I made Absorbo Softy using all these found objects, and let me tell you about Absorbo Softy's adaptations. Those are skills and traits that Absorbo Softy has to survive and evolve and adapt to Absorbo Softy's environment. 
So Absorbo Softy's torso is this sponge, and the, that is so Absorbo Softy can is um, very empathetic and absorbs everything around them, and they are able to take in harmful and beautiful things and absorb them and either wring them out or take them and soak in them. And this is Absorbo Softy's wings which the holes in the wings, the leaf damage, actually give Absorbo Softy a lot of flight power because Absorbo Softy gets more wind that way. So Absorbo Softy is able to take the damage from the wings and fly higher. Absorbo Softy has teasel for eyes so that Absorbo Softy can untangle as Absorbo Softy sees things. Right as they're seeing, they're able to untangle all the messiness of it. Absorbo Softy has tulip trees for claws, and that is because these Absorbo Softy claws are not your normal claws. These are because they have cattails on the end, so these claws are for unfurling and for flowering and connecting with others. Because remember, these flowering trees are so the trees can be pollinated. So this is all about co finding connection with others. So instead of using the claws to bite, um, so if someone pushes a boundary with Softo uh, Absorbo Softy, Absorbo Softy gets really curious and with the cattail at the end of Absorbo Softy's claws, Absorbo Softy spreads softness. Remember cattail disperses seeds, so Absorbo Softy spreads the softness of connection. And Absorbo Softy has this kind of tail for measurement. And this is so that Absorbo Softy can keep boundaries. When Absorbo Soft, remember Absorbo Softy absorbs a lot of things, so sometimes Absorbo, Absorbo Softy needs to measure how far away they are from something. And they use this to calculate how far away they need to be. And let's see, the candle here is Absorbo Softy's mouth. So candles light things on fire, illuminate things, and Absorbo Softy, even though Absorbo Softy is very soft, still uses its mouth, uh, their mouth, to illuminate, to set fire, to spark ideas. And so this is Absorbo Softy. I'm so excited to introduce you to this new species. Where do you think the species lives? What do you think uh, Absorbo Softy does for fun? What do you think Absorbo Softy eats? Who does Absor Absorbo Softy hang out with? So thank you for joining us. Please share what you create, all of the imaginary species, so that they can cohabitate and make friends, and so that Ryan and I can continue to engage and we can hear your species story. You can share by tagging Wave Hill or hashtagging Family Art Project or hashtag depth in distance. And we will see you soon. I can't wait to hear about your species.